In this video, I'm going to give you the next engineer battle drill, and that's going to be breaching an 11 row obstacle. An 11 row obstacle is typically made up of 11 rolls of concertina wire, hence why we call it an 11 row. 33 long pickets, 22 short pickets, one roll of barbed wire, and one log. You can also reinforce this obstacle with the use of landmines. I will be doing videos here in the coming weeks of putting in how to emplace all the obstacles that I am showing you in the breach videos. Now, this type of obstacle is typically put in at a choke point. In this case, we have a dirt road that was traveling up here between two hills. It narrows out. Someone might have cut this out at one time to put the roadway in. Well, they're trying to deny us moving through there, so they put in an 11 row. You can use these across roadways. I have seen it done where it's still 11 rows, but in order to cross both lanes of the roads, they used 22 rolls of concertina wire. So you had a full roll going across and another one on that going across on the other side. Takes a lot of time though, especially because of the amount of barbed wire you got to use. Each roll of wire has a, well, there'll be a picket on, short picket on each side, long picket, long picket, long picket in the center. You'll have barbed wire coming up here. It'll go across the very top of the row, anchored on the side by the short pickets, also known as the anchor pickets. The barbed wire keeps the breach team from coming in, just picking up the wire off the picket. Now, just like with any breach, first you need to establish saucer, suppress, obscure, secure, reduce. The first three are done by the maneuver or supported element, the infantry, the armor, the cav. The R is done by the engineers. If the first three conditions are not met, the engineers do not get called up to perform the breach. If they do, they will take casualties and more than likely be wiped out. So the conditions have been set. We had light infantry that came up. They cleared the hills on both sides and they have teams watching the back side. We also have infantry off on the flanks making sure no one's going to try flanking the breach team. So we dismount our vehicle short of the obstacle a minimum of 25 to 50 meters back but one thing we used to do with 11 rows we would put them on turns and you would notice it till the first vehicle is basically right on top of it but it try to park at least out of the line of where the blast would get focused when you set off the Bangalore torpedoes because this is a wire obstacle we will use Bangalore's we have no visible mines that we can see, but we're going to go through and do the normal breech wire drill. So we'll have down here our squad leader, our assistant team leader. We'll have on here our rifleman who is our grappler, squad designated marksman and our auto rifleman. The grappler will be sent up. He'll do his crow first and then straight up. Try to get it in that first row. Don't try tossing it too far back. You'll lose your grapple hook in the explosion. But if you can get it into that first row, give it a tug a little bit just to make sure there's no, nothing tied in on the first row. Then he moves up, rifleman waits up here, he pulls his grapnel hook out. 
Then the assistant team leader comes up and the squad designated marksmen come up and they will be begin putting in the tor Bangalore torpedoes. Now for those of you that have seen the uh, World War II movies when they call for Bangalores and they feed them under the wire, that's what this drill is. The Bangalores can be hooked together using couplings so that you can create one long section. Now we have a log here inside the wire that is to prevent the Bangalores from going all the way through on the first shot. It's to make the engineers have to do two breaches. There should not be more than two logs inside the obstacle because if that happens the engineers can then sometimes angle the Bangalore up over the top of the logs and it will actually help them get the Bangalores through, believe it or not. So doctrinally, there's only supposed to be one. And I'll let you know on its location when we do the emplacement video. But the Bangalores will get put in. They'll get fed through until they reach the log. Now the Bangalores get placed right next to the pickets that are run up the center. You only have three pickets typically in an 11 row obstacle. One on each end, one in the center. So you put the Bangalores next to those, that center line. The breach team then pulls back. They note they uh, have the initiation system tied into the Bangalores. They call out over the radio or signal so the infantry on top of the hills pull back so they're out of the blast area and hopefully out of the uh, fallout zone for any wire pickets and other stuff that will come down. Countdown ends, the Bangalore goes off, it will create a lane up to the lock. You'll still have the pickets on the end and pieces of wire connected to those pickets. So at this point, your breach team comes up again. This time they'll be just short of the obstacle. Now there is the possibility there is buried mines in here. And because of the blast, they could be sensitized meaning they could go off a lot more easily so you're still going to stay in the prone and that stuff down here so we'll still have our squad leader our assistant team leader we'll have our rifleman auto rifleman squad designated marksman we don't need to worry about grappling because if there were any tripwires the Bangalore would have shattered them already, would have split them and set off any mines. So now we will have two people go up. We'll have this, the assistant team leader and the rifleman will go up. If it requires to, they will take that log, they will pull it out of the way, shut, toss it to the side. Doesn't matter which side it goes, you just toss it off to the side. So we'll toss it over here. Both of them go back. The assistant team leader then and the squad designated marksman who are our demo team. Then go forward with whatever amount of Bangalores are required. If they think it's going to be three, four, five, whatever it is. They get up there, they do the Bangalore drill again. Putting the sections together and feeding it through till it goes out past the rear row of the obstacle. They tie in their initiation systems. They then fall back. Call it out over the radio that there's going to be another blast. The team pulls back. You do your countdown. The blast occurs. Then we come back forward again. 
The squad leader proofs the lane as best they can. He's looking for mines and that stuff in here while that's going on. The rest of the breach team is taking any strands of wire that are sticking out too far and they're flipping them back off to the edge to make sure it's a nice clear lane. Then they do their quick markings. Does not have to be a full lane marking for this one. You might, depending on how wide the area is, you may want to put in a funnel, otherwise you're just going to put in road cones on each end. Or via 17 marker, flat, marker panels or bicycle flags. And then they call it out, the breach is open and everyone keeps moving through again. The infantry come down, they look mount back up and you Charlie Mike on to your next objective. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia Movement, always remember, Essayance.